In this tutorial, I will go over how to do a Northern Lights tumbler. I started off with a top of navy blue and a bottom in black, and then I added my tree line about a half inch up from the base, and I created it in my Silhouette Studio, and I did do the warp feature so that it would fit appropriately. For my base coat of epoxy, I used some of the Northern Lights from Woods Goodies and put that in my epoxy so that I could add a little bit of glow in the background. I will say that it didn't show up a whole lot in the end result, but it's because I did layer my colors of glitter on top and so it became more opaque um, as far as the glow goes. So I could see it, but I couldn't capture it in picture. But just having that little extra glow, uh, it did it did look good. Like if you if you added more glow, it probably would have looked a little bit better. But I could still see it through some of the colors that are a little bit more translucent. I started off by adding this epoxy all over the cup. I do pull it from just where the vinyl was touching on the bottom. I don't did not go below the actual tree line there because I wanted all of the glitter that I put to stick just above the tree line. So where you can see the the actual like line through them, I wanted the glitter to stick in those areas only. I didn't want it to go behind the trees or below them because I only wanted it above. So I just applied the epoxy mixture with the Northern Lights uh, glow powder in it on the entire cup. So that's my process for here. And you do want just a very thin layer of epoxy, enough that your glitter will just kind of soak into uh, very quickly. You don't want to put a ton of epoxy to where the epoxy is going to be running off, but you do want to put enough that your glitter will kind of soak into it so that you can build up to whatever le level of um, color that you would like. And I did be sure to go into all those little crevices of my vinyl where it shows the details of the trees because I wanted to make sure that all of those details were going to get hit with glitter and when I pulled the vinyl that those details would remain.
The next step is to apply the glitter. And I used several different glitters in order to do mine. Um, this color here is Bejeweled and it's a peachy olive glitter. And I liked this color because it does have that shifting effect. And that's what I was going for with mine, uh, Northern Lights. I wanted it to be all glitter for one. And then I also wanted to use as many shifting glitters as I could to capture kind of how a normal Northern Lights is being done. And I'm just going along the base of the tree line and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get the different effects of the actual glitter as it changes like the northern lights and the pictures that I use as my inspiration for the color choice color choices that I used um, it had kind of just a fading pattern and then it had a few different other little patterns that I did want to capture and this was one of them to just, just kind of have all the layering of the glitters and this color that I'm using right here is a matte, and I think it's called Celery. It's from Beach Girls Glitter, and it's just a matte pearl green, and it works perfectly because it has that opaque kind of um, look to it, so it's going to cover very well, and I really wanted that to make sure that I got on the base of my cup, the base of my actual northern lights, I wanted to get that full opaque look, and it really, it really did what I wanted, so I was really happy with it. But um, the inspiration pictures that I used had a lot of greens and a lot of blues and then kind of some purples and pinks. So that was the color palette that I was going for with this cup. And a lot of the greens were on the base. So I started with this matte pearl green glitter and um, worked my way up from there. And I will say that with this cup and as you're laying your layering your glitters you want to make sure that you're using as little as you can to start with and that you kind of build up your colors so I've said a couple times when people asked how I did this and how I got the effect that I wanted was less is more because it really is less is really more with um, using the glitters and using the different um, kind of almost ombre effects because as you use a little bit less you can always apply more but if you just dump on a whole bunch at one time you're not going to be able to pull that back off so if you build it up to the color that you want it works really well and so that's what I did here um, I just started with a little bit and then I kept adding more and adding more with each area that I was trying to focus on and this color that I'm using right now is called Kermit Wazowski, and it is from Peachy Olive Glitters as well. And it kind of has a shifting effect from like a greenish color to a gold. And I use that next to, um, I think there's a little bit of blue in there too, but I use that next to my celery color, which was the matte pearl green. And I'm just kind of moving into the next colors uh, to get that effect that I wanted to have. And this color that I'm using now is Dress Blues. And this is also a peachy olive glitter. And the pictures that I used, again, had like a navy blue top to them. So like the northern lights on the very top of it was more of a navy blue color. And that's why I did spray paint my cup navy blue on the top. Because I wanted to get that navy blue and not just black color on the top. Um, so I didn't have to just apply all glitter, but I did do mostly glitter on all of the aspects of it and then I left a little couple spots that were not glitter to kind of pull through some of just the flat um, colors from the spray paint as well but the dress blues was a really good navy um, that I used for that so that is what I used there And this next color that I use is called 80s Baby, and it is by Feather Bear Bling. And it's a really pretty color that shifts from a blue to a pink. And again, with, with having a shifting color, it makes it really cool because you can 
build up your color to that full pink color that you want or you can just kind of sprinkle it and let that that shifting blue color be kind of the background so again here I dumped on really heavy where I wanted to have that more pink color come through and then I just lightly sprinkled on the areas where I wanted it to be more of like a purplish um, and a bluish color and I did start um, along like the bottom I wanted it to blend up so I did do that there now the pictures that I was using for my inspiration on this one they did have some um, different like lines and different things throughout the sky and throughout the northern lights um, different areas that I looked at and I went off of like three different pictures because I wanted to have multiple effects and multiple uh, different areas also to my um, cup and several of the areas were um, kind of like liney and so it was more of like specific lines of colors and so that's what I'm going for here. I was building that pink up because I wanted to really get a good strong pink in some areas and then I wanted to have less in other areas. And in this area, they had those little like splotches of lines and it looked like it was kind of going across the sky sideways. And so I put the glitter on my spoon and just kind of knocked it off of the edges to have it fall in those areas so that I could get that kind of almost a radiating effect of where that was doing that in the inspiration picture that I had. Um, but it was kind of liney and <laughs> I, I think I said that it's, I don't even know if that's a word but it's kind of like there's just like lines in the sky of the northern lights and so I wanted to build up to those pink areas like they had in the picture and like is a real actual northern lights picture um, and then I wanted to in the other areas um, not have it do that so this color is um, I think it's called Pinky Promise from Glitzy City and I wanted to use it because it has pink and a gold shift. And so it's a good contrast to the pink and the blue shift. But also being able to build up my pink um, was a really good option. So again, I told you guys I used quite a few different colors. But I had each of them had a purpose to why I was using them. And um, that was my purpose for those two different pinks. And then here I'm also using that celery pearl mat again because on the base of where these lining areas were it used that it, the green color was also prevalent there so I went back to that in a few spots. And this next color is a really pretty black color that I use for a lot of my galaxy type cups. And I knew it would be perfect for this one. It's um, Back Fist Customs and it's their Atlanta Nights. And it's a black color, but it has a lot of um, 
other colors kind of added in and it looks like you're looking at the sky because of the other colors that it shows. So it was a really good option for this cup as well because I did want to have a darker part to the sky um, as opposed to just having it all be the navy blue on the top. And so I used that to kind of add some contrast into that sky as well. And it worked really well. I really liked how the effect of it because it has the little pops of color um, and it looks like it's twinkling. back in with my navy blue and just touched up some of the areas and added some additional color of that navy blue uh, to several different spots along the actual tumbler. And I also went back in with that green just to make sure that the areas that I wanted it to be super green were. And by adding that additional layer after waiting for the epoxy to kind of soak up that initial um, layer of glitter, it gives it that more opaque look and it doesn't let the um, underneath side shine so much. So like the dark, darker color. The more you add the glitter, the more opaque it gets. So um, I just went back in with the colors and just focused on the areas that I wanted it to be more of the actual color coming through and not the shifting color or not seeing as much of that base paint color coming through. And I really had fun with um, doing this and just kind of looking at my pictures and trying to get my vision to come through in what I was actually glittering. So it was really fun to do that part of it. the vinyl guys this is like the most boring part ever but a lot of times when I don't include parts of my video um, people comment and ask why they why did I, I did not include those parts so I am including that in here it's about a I don't know 20 minute process to take this vinyl off or something I don't know it's a long it's a long time to take the vinyl off and I'm using a new uh, tutorial software this time so I can't speed anything up so it, it kind of stinks and I'm sorry but I thought it might benefit you to see how I did it and to kind of get an idea of how slow I went as well because I did go very slow um, with removing the vinyl on this and the reason is because I mean all that's on there is paint and epoxy so if I slip with my exacto knife or if you use a different tool and you slip with it you're gonna you're gonna scratch your paint so I I went very very slow because um, I really wanted to get all of the pieces of my vinyl off of there I didn't put anything on on there um, so that I could see it or feel it or anything like that I just really um, you can see it it's not that hard to find 
um, because it's going to be white underneath there. So you're going to be able to see it pretty good. There are a couple little areas that once you get the green on, you can't see it as well, but it really wasn't that bad with being able to find it. And I just took my X-Acto knife and kept it flat up against uh, the cup. So it was, it was not going to like stab the cup or anything. Um, I just kept it flat. That way if I did miss, it would just go flat. <laughs> and the most that I would hit would hopefully be just the vinyl um, that I was trying to get off. So I just kind of worked it underneath there and then I would pull it up. Um, probably should have used um, gloves to do this, but I was not quite thinking about that. And so I just went really slow and I would kind of pull up a little section of it and then use my tweezers and pull it off. Um, one thing that I didn't really foresee when I started doing this was that my vinyl was going to stick to my tweezers or stick to my X-Acto knife. And so I think that was the most frustrating part of doing this at all was that I kept tr having a hard time getting my vinyl off of, <laughs> off of my uh, tweezers are off of my exacto knife. So I ended up grabbing just a BB wipe and setting it on my leg. And then I could kind of wipe it off as well as I, um, if, cause like as you're pulling this, the glitter from the vinyl that you're pulling off is going to get kind of caked up on your exacto knife and also your, uh, tweezers. And so I just kept my tools wiped off that way as well. That way I wasn't transferring glitter that I didn't want on to that black part of my cup. And as you're pulling your vinyl off, you just want to go real slow with it, especially when it gets real intricate with the design, like these trees are. You just want to make sure you're pulling it really slow and you're not going to just pull off the rest of it. And it's super important that you do this immediately after you get done glittering it. If you leave that on there, you're done. Like you're not going to be able to get it off without pulling completely off everything, if you can even get it off at all, because your epoxy is going to cure hard. So while your epoxy is still tax tacky is when you're going to want to pull that off. Now, as you work on it, it's going to get more and more tacky. So the quicker you work with your glitter and getting that on there and the quicker you get to your vinyl to be able to pull it off, it's going to work the best that way. So um, do try to quickly move through the glittering, um, but still taking your time to get the actual design that you want and then pulling it off. And I always try to pull when I pull my vinyl, I always try to pull it um, straight back and up and kind of almost bend my vinyl backwards so that it's, it's going to like almost cut into that glitter so that you can get a good clean break. Yeah, still pulling vinyl, guys. We got a little bit more time to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, again. I know it's annoying because it takes forever to pull this vinyl. And it's not a very fun process to watch. But I'll keep dropping Easter eggs in here for you. <laughs> It 
it's just completely stuck on my hand and I cannot get it off at all. That was fun. I kept flipping it around and it just stayed on my fingers. And as you can see on this part right here, I was really trying to get underneath that vinyl. And what I did was just kind of go underneath there and then pop it up so that I could grab it with my tweezers. I wanted to use the X-Acto knife as little as possible because I have said so many times, um, if you're in Tumblr tutorials group with us, um, I am a Mindy Magoo and everything I touch generally gets messed up um, initially. I can fix things, but um, I am so clumsy and... So I Mindy Magoo everything. And so if the, the, the least amount of time that I can be using an X-Acto knife is probably the better because then I won't, I'll have less of an opportunity to just totally ram into this and mess up my whole design. Um, so I was just really trying to just get that X-Acto knife in there, pop up the vinyl so that I could grab it with my tweezers. Now, if you have a better way to do it, by all means, do your decal and do your design um, however works for you guys. Uh, this was the way that I thought of to do it, so this is just the way that I did it. But if you have a better idea or um, a different idea, do it. Do whatever works for you, because I know not everybody's going to have the same... The same um, abilities to do different things or the same materials to do things the way that I do them. So um, I'm a big pusher for just do whatever works for you because we're all different. I went back around um, after I did complete everything because there's little pieces that were stuck everywhere. So I was just going through and making sure that everything did get pulled up that should have been pulled up because um, they tend, tend to hide. And then I just kind of cleaned things up a little bit and made sure that there were no like glitter that got below where it should have been because I wanted that line to be uh, very even and make sure that all the glitter was above that line.
Aren't those trees cute? Yes, they are. I really liked how those turned out. And here I just grabbed a baby wipe and I just made sure that there was nothing on the bottom um, that wasn't supposed to be there because I was transferring a few little pieces here and there. So I just grabbed a baby wipe and made sure that it was all clean. And if you made it here, we made it, it's all done. So this is what it looked like once I got all of that vinyl pulled off. And that is what the glittering looks like. At this point, I do still have the tape on the top and the bottom because this was a taped off cup. So I have not removed it yet. Now it is spinning on my turner with epoxy. This is the completed cup. And I took several pictures going around so that you could see all of the angles of the cup. And as well as it laying down. And then I have this video so that you can see it all the way around. I hope you guys have liked this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Drop me a comment if you have any questions.